Hey, Honors Chem. I'm going to quickly go over what you need to do for Unit 10. Now, those of you that have written papers before, this is a little bit different because there is one paper, but instead of everyone writing the same paper, I split it into sections. Um, quite frankly, there's a lot of new information with this paper, and I didn't feel it was fair to make all of you research all of it. So instead, we're going to kind of divide and conquer. So this is how you'll be graded for the Unit 10 Honors Project. It is worth 90 points, so it's as much as two tests. Being late for anything will be a 10-point reduction per section. So if you're late for this, you can only get 10 out of 20 points. If you're late for this, you can only get 5 out of 15 points. Here's why. Um, this means the date written on the calendar is the actual day I will use for taking off points because this is a group project. So if you don't have this section turned in by the 22nd at midnight, you're going to lose 10 points. All right, because we're working on this together. So it's super important that everybody's respectful to each other. And one way of showing respect is to make sure you get your part done on time. Now, of course, if there's emergency situations that arise, send me a K-mail. All right, you will need to choose your topic by March 6th, which is this upcoming Friday. And you're going to do that in the Unit 10 Raise Your Hand. All right, so log into your class, go to Unit 10. And when you do, it will look like this. So I'm in the unit 10, raise your hand, and you just click respond. And in the title, please put um, which section you want. That will save everybody some time, because once a section is taken, that's it, it's gone. So you're going to be choosing from topics, I just said sections, but topics, sections, whatever, A through I. So it's going to be very specific what you're doing. All right, um, you need to choose your topic by March 6th at the Unit 10 Raise Your Hand. Warning, you must have two to three good paragraphs. So some topics will need to be delved into more deeply than others. So if you look down here, some of them just have one sentence. Okay, Some of them have a whole paragraph saying what you need to cover. Either way, whether you have a sentence or a paragraph, it shouldn't be more than three-fourths of a page long. And I say this because, remember, if I did A through I together, that should be one six-page paper. All right, so we're breaking it up into nine sections. So at the most, you should write three-fourths of a page, which should be two to three good paragraphs. Um, but specifically, no more than three-fourths of a page. You need to have at least half a page. All right. Um, post two to three cited paragraphs with a bibliography. Citing. You need to cite any fact that you looked up, any fact that you didn't know or that's not common knowledge. If you want to just put a number one at the end of the sentence and then down below you have your bibliography, all I want is the website. But do not give me google.com. Seriously, no. I want a website where if I click on the link, I can see exactly what you saw and what you used. All right, so I don't care about MLA format. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I want is when you post at the end of your two to three paragraphs, you list your sources, and again, you just put the number within the sentence that you use that fact from. If you have questions on that or you want me to check your draft before you post it, I am happy to do that. Send it to me in Kmail. So, your two to three cited paragraphs with a bibliography that I will grade like a final draft, meaning I will take off points for grammar. I will take off points if you don't have everything in here. Okay, I grade these very, very tough. And it's due March 22nd, which is a Sunday. All right, then read all the posts. Post a total of three questions or ways to improve a post. Be polite. You can reply to one post or two posts or three posts. I just need either three questions or three ways to improve it. So if they made a typo, let them know, things like that. Um, if you're like, well, they covered it, but I really don't understand this part, you know, or maybe add a little bit about that, that would help. So I don't care if you just say three things to one person or one thing to three people, I don't care. But I also expect responses to be posted to everyone's original post. So if you want a choice, post sooner rather than later. So you need to have it done by April 5th, um, and again, let's say a whole bunch of people posted on person A's, 
Well, then don't post to person A. Pick somebody who hasn't had somebody else respond to them. Then you're going to respond to the people who commented on your post by the 14th of April. Check the responses to your questions, comments you posted, and respond back with at least one sentence, just so I know that you read through it kind of thing. Fix your original response to include what others suggested, if applicable, and this will be another posting due April 28th. Then, what you're going to do is email me two summary sentences, meaning you make up the sentence, don't copy them, from each section A through I, and that's due May 10th. So for those 20 points, you're going to go and read everybody's final paragraphs. So really, you're going to learn about all this stuff. You just only had to research one section, and that's where we're dividing and we're conquering by you're still going to learn all this, you're just going to read it, and then just email me two summary sentences, basically so I know you read them all. All right, so example, March 6th, I choose topic A. March 22nd, I post a final draft quality post of two to three paragraphs about topic A, complete with sightings and a bibliography. Um, by the 5th, I tell the person who did topic B a suggestion to add a comma. Ask what are symptoms of decompression sickness, and I ask topic D to talk more about hospitals and liquid breathing. So either grammar or what else to clarify. And these should be well thought out. You're helping that person along. 417, I respond to the person who gave me suggestions. So person, let's say person F responded to me, then I would respond to them and be like, oh, here's an answer to your question, or oh yeah, I missed that comma, thanks a lot. You know, just something like that. So um, more like you're talking to the person, but if they ask you a question, answer it please. Um, and then by the 28th, I go back to topics B and C and at least acknowledge their responses to my questions. Okay, so I asked topic D to say a little bit more about hospitals. They did. Then I go back and say, oh, that was really interesting. Or, oh, wow, that's not what I thought. I would have thought it would have been more like this. You know, again, just kind of more of a talking thing there. Then the 28th, you post your perfect paragraphs. And then you email me two summary sentences that you wrote yourself about each of these topics. So here are the topics. If you choose to be person A, this is the topic, this is what I'm looking at to grade you. So this is just a general idea. Explain how nitrogen behaves when a scuba diver dives to great depth. By the way, this is all talking about how gases affect scuba divers and the way that it goes into the lessons is because we're talking about changes in pressures and how the gases inside your body react to those changes in pressure. So, student discusses how nitrogen dissolves in blood and tissues with increased pressure at depth and how nitrogen forms bubbles in blood and tissue when the diver ascends and pressure decreases. So, then I put some do nots. Do not because when you're reading about this, you might find some stuff about that and I don't want you to include that because this is person B's job. Person B explained decompression sickness, nitrogen, narcosis, and a high pressure nervous syndrome. So you're talking about the diseases or the disorders. And again, don't talk to me about what's up here. Talk to me specifically about your part. Parts C and D kind of go together. Um, and if you want to talk to the person who's doing your other part, you're welcome to do that too because you'll know who it is because everyone's posting in the unit 10, raise your hand. C. Student explains how decompression stops allow nitrogen to come out of solution slowly without forming bubbles. So again, that one might seem like, oh, that's just a couple sentences. Well, no, go in depth. Tell me about the science. Tell me about the chemistry. Explain how it works. D, student explains principles of saturation diving and how it can allow divers to remain at great depth for extended periods. Okay, so you're, you're going to maybe say a sentence or two about coming out of solution, but that's not what you're focusing on. Focus on the other parts of it. E, Student has written a thorough description of liquid breathing and how the technique works. Yes, you can breathe liquid. Super cool. F, student provides examples of the use of liquid breathing in medicine with examples such as premature infants and patients with respiratory problems. So E's talking about how it works. F's talking about how hospitals will use it. G, student discusses that liquid breathing in diving is still experimental and discuss at least one experimental study to show progress. So you're looking for an actual study. So 
student may mention the scene from the abyss with the liquid breathing rat was real, but human divers have not used this technology. So if you've ever seen the abyss, this might be a really good one for you to take. Or I guess maybe it's an excuse for you to read a book or watch a movie. <laughs> H. Students should discuss how this technology, oops, how liquid breathing technology will solve the problems of decompression thickness and nitrogen associated problems. And then I, students should discuss the disadvantages of liquid breathing. So everyone else is talking about how great it is. Person I is like, well, it's not perfect. Let's talk about that. Such as the increased work needed by the respiratory muscles to inhale and exhale the dense, viscous fluorocarbon fluid. Student may mention that mechanically assisted ventilation, like that used with respiratory patients, might help solve the problem of increased work of breathing. So you're talking about the problem, you can add in some solution. All right, so that's all I have. If you have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, this will all be posted in an announcement as well as in the unit 10. Raise your hand. Good luck. Let me know how I can help along the way.